What's going on guys? Thanks for tuning in to this podcast. I just wanted to let you know that my personal microphone wasn't working the best for the first four and a half minutes, so it sounds a little muffled and echoey, um, but Bill, the owner of Piff Minneapolis, he, his microphone was working just fine, but after that four and a half minutes, we figured it out, and it's perfect from there on out, so just bear with us for the first four and a half minutes, and I hope you enjoy this show um, with me and Bill from Piff Minneapolis, our first guest on the podcast and we will be doing a lot more um guest podcasts because this was very fun and i enjoy doing it and i know you guys like watching and listening to it so thank you let's get right to the show Bill, a.k.a. OG Rob. OG Rob from Piff, Minneapolis. You are my first guest in this room. Love it. Love to hear that. I'm very familiar with this room, as we know, so I think it's pretty fitting. I was going to say, uh, oh yeah, no, no one better than you yourself. You, you built this room, right? Or was a part of building this room? Yeah, yeah, it definitely was a part of the store. Um, ben did a good amount of the build-out at that time, but, you know, this was our headquarters for a few years, and been a... Uh, a block boy on Como Ave for quite a while now. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. If you guys didn't know, um, Bill, owner of Piff Minneapolis, was Piff was in the store before us, and this was their store, 1521 Como Avenue Southeast. If you didn't know, now you know. But let's get right into it. Um, I'm curious to know how did um, you get started into the shoe game? Like, what was what sparked your interest as a kid or as in high school or whatever? You know. Definitely, yeah. The the shoes go way back for me. Um, I grew up just outside of Chicago, so obviously MJ had a huge role in uh, inspiring me as a kid, looking up to him, and like everything amazing that he did, all the cool Jordans that we're still wearing today, 30 years later. Uh, I had a couple of older brothers, you know, I always wanted to be fresh like them and their friends. And then as I grew and got a little bit older, I got more introduced to like the SB culture and was hanging out with friends that wore skateboarding shoes and were skating. So then that kind of started to cross and mix, you know, the basketball, the music, the skateboarding all kind of came together and just was perfect what I love doing. So, so what, what made you get a store then? Like what, what, I guess I start, when did you open Piff? Yeah, so we opened Piff in 2014. <laughs> Uh, my business partner, Ben Alberts, uh, decided to open up a store. He was doing a decent amount of traveling at the time and just noticed that we had a void in Minneapolis. He was seeing really cool stores out in New York, L.A., Chicago, mainly being the closest. Um, and him and I were always grinding on Craigslist. That was like before Facebook Marketplace was a thing even. Doing eBay and... Uh, <clears throat> kind of got whiff from a mutual friend that he was going to open a store and I knew that was something I always wanted to be a part of so I kind of jumped on board and did what I could to, to help and be involved right from the get-go. How did you get the name Piff? How'd you get the name Piff? Piff, well it, um, originally the business uh, Ben had started was called Scotty Piff which was like an alter ego just a funny nickname um, but then it kind of evolved into just Piff which was really fitting um, because it stands for superior to the average, um, which we try to strive every day to be great and to really just elevate and take things to the next level. And then also, it's a way to compliment somebody, I would say, you know, like your hoodie's very piff, okay. like a piff outfit. So it's like another way of saying fresh. I'll start using that. Yeah. yeah. All right, we back. Cool. So continuing on with the interview, we figured out the audio. You probably, you could have heard me, but it might have been a little bit quieter, but... We loud now. We're loud now. We're we're even. We're not different. All right. So, what are your favorite shoes that are currently in circulation right now? Man, I get asked that question all the time, and I feel like I should have an answer, but it just changes um, so often. I feel like everybody would say like the Air Jordan One, um, which obviously I like. I'm a huge fan of. I'm wearing a pair right now. Mm -hmm. I like to be unique and different, though. So I'm trying to you know, branch out, wear some like ice creams. Blazers are really cool. They're catching mm -hmm. a lot of steam lately too. But um, 
kind of just like to stick to the classics or the OGs, you could say, where part of my nickname came from. The OGs? Yeah. Um, is there a certain, is there one, is there one shoe that sticks out to you more than any other that you, that you either own or that you want to own? Man, every shoe sticks out to me for its own reason. Um, it really just depends on the rest of the outfit. A couple of like my all time favorites are definitely going to be the original Supreme Blazer from 2006. Fire. Just like the quilted joints. Um, you know, uh, OG bread one from 85. I'm fortunate to have that in my collection. Fire. So that's kind of just like all time grail for a lot of collectors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Dope. Um, do you have any crazy shoe stories? Like maybe a crazy story that happened in your store or like going to get a pair of shoes on release day and people are budging the line, fighting for a spot or, you know, just like any weird experience <clears throat> where a customer came in and was just really just, it was just different than usual. Yeah. Um, man, there's so many, so many stories that pop into my head. I think one of the most memorable shoe stories for me personally, or, you know, what happened at the store was, uh, probably back in 2015 or so we went to an event in milwaukee called msx mm -hmm. we packed everything up we got there when we unpacked and set our table up we realized we were missing a couple of left shoes mm. one being for a yeezy pirate black which was the hottest shoe in the market at the time yeah and it was like my first high ticket pair that i was planning on busting out and like wearing at the event we got there couldn't find it Damn. completely lost it um so it kind of just started off the day really sour to mm -hmm. say the least before a long day as you know you know those events are yeah. a lot of work um so i was pretty convinced somebody stole it from us while we were setting up our table or grabbed it out of the car and just the one shoe just the one shoe bro okay. so like we were setting up the table with all of our right shoes which we brought in like laundry hampers or something to make it simple and quick mm -hmm. And then the box and the left shoe went missing. So I'm like, mm. someone nabbed that off our stack. And I just chalked it up as a loss. We went back home. You know, we still had a great time and a good event nonetheless. Um, but that was a tough L at the time, mm -hmm. for sure. Just kind of closer to the but startup. But then you came back home and you found it? No, that's no? the thing. Came back home, didn't find it. Didn't find it. Um, about six months to a year later, the 2.0 pirate black came out mm. the same day that one came out somebody walked into the store and said so weird one of my friends found one of these shoes in the street a few blocks from here and i'm like what are you talking about he's like yeah he found a yeezy in the street just the right one though and i'm like was it a black one was it a size 10 and a half and he said well let me check with him he's like yeah he's using it as a star on his Christmas tree with his girlfriend oh my God. and it's been chilling on their mantle for eight months. And sure enough, it ended up being my shoe. That's wild. And so the guy returned the shoe to me with his girlfriend and I put the pair back together like a year later, that's the same crazy. day I hit on another pair. That's actually, um, that's, that, that's a story. So I went from having one Yeezy shoe to mm -hmm. two pairs in the same day. Fire. It was pretty cool. You didn't yeah. downgrade that one shoe to a doorstop? Ah, <sighs> not that then? one, man. Yeah. Not that one, not yet. But I've seen you've been using the shattered backboard. That's a shattered backboard, right? It is, it the 2.0. The 2.0. If you've been using, I, I looked on Google Maps to see what our store looked like before, like just to see what it looks like on Google Maps. And it, yeah. it was when you were still there, obviously with that shoe in there, has that, that's been your doorstop for a while? Then? It's, it's been, uh, it's been there for a while. Similar mishap where we only ended up with one of the shoes due to some, uh, due to some uh, odd events, unfortunately. Traveling. Yeah, yeah, traveling and theft, but um, just make the best of the situation. Yeah. That's kind of how we got our um, doorstop. We just have like that Air Max, that colorful Air Max we, yeah. we have in there. And during the riots, um, Nate was just walking around, like just seeing what the fuck's going on. There's just bunches of shoes just laying in the streets just, outside yeah, of the mall. And he's just like... He just found that one shoe there and there was no other one. So he just had it and he's like, I got a perfect doorstop for us. So we've been yeah. using it and that's what we've been using. It's funny. It actually works well because the, the doors on the buildings are really tall and stuff. You can't even find a doorstop. Yeah, so I, I bought doorstops sneakers, right away and they were not working. Need sneakers for the win. Um, how, does it, how, does, how does it feel like coming back into the store and like seeing what we've done to it? Um, I mean, it's different, you know, so mm -hmm. it's cool that there's still like the similar culture here that they're mm -hmm. buying selling trading and um that it's more that the block is a destination now yeah. but um 
it it just seems like a completely different store now yeah you know so that's cool Mm -hmm. yeah did when um when you when you had the store what were you using this room for so this back room we used as like a hidden kind of like uh gallery per se we had some racks in here with some higher ticket items and some couches and then when some of like our shoppers would come in and want that exclusive experience we'd bring them back here and kind of like curate the selection for them we did a lot of our own meetings back here in the morning or set up the studio to like photograph products and stuff as well so this was a very well used room really Mm -hmm. you know and i was question now it is still a well used room. yeah yeah. very well used not used enough but we're going to continue to be using it more but um that the stock x wall was that all just from the start you guys were just slapping all your stock x stickers up there how did that turn how did that pan out yeah that was mostly from just kind of deals we did um drop shipping deals or trade-in deals where somebody in the store really wanted a shoe that we didn't have and we you know, did what we could to go out our way to make it happen. Okay. You know, whether they traded in a couple of old shoes and then we bought them a brand new shoe just because we didn't have what they wanted in mm-hmm. their size. But we got a few, few of those. Yeah. The whole, the wall. that wall was full. When we first came yeah. here, we we're like, we we're like, I think we need to utilize this wall for something. So we were doing like yeah. sneaker review videos in front of it. And we we're like, maybe, maybe we can try to build a little stock X like sponsorship. S- off this, the but bread. Yeah. yeah no, we never to... sent them a footage or anything of that, but yeah. there's, that's a lot of stock X orders. Yeah, sure. and I I can understand how quick that can build up because I know we people would just have sold us so many shoes that are from stock X brand new with the sticker in there and still that everything. Too. And I'm like, I'm just putting yeah. these around the room. Like we almost gonna make a whole other wall with all these. Yeah. Um, but I know your store has transitioned into being a lot more new, like new shoes, new clothes, um, stuff like that. Um, how do you feel about bo- shoes with no box? Shoes with no box. I love them love them i love them like when people come in to sell them to yeah you? i mean who cares y'all like a lot of a lot of people that come bitch in about store, a box yeah. nowadays yeah and that is part of the problems you know with mm-hmm. the sneaker community it's like we're not wearing the box guys yeah it's like they, the box carries the value and i know some people probably stack their shoes in their room and like yeah. that's the only thing I, that's the only reason why i enjoy at least having the box or i can see why other people enjoy having the box is because sure. it's way better for storage but at the same time it's like people want like a lot of money off because there's no box i'm like maybe like 10 bucks off if he didn't know there wasn't a box until i came up here with it but it's like it's a box like come on it's it's fair you know i get it as a consumer you should get a little bit of a break for not having the box that's why i like no box pairs Mm -hmm. i don't need the box and if i get a better price on the shoe perfect yeah we definitely use that as a motive to be like yeah if it had the box you know we could do a little bit more but blah 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 yeah i mean and it just makes sense as a consumer you know, the stacking them is nice. I use drop fronts myself. Yeah, I have took like me three a while. of those now. It took me a while to come around to like pay for them. It's painful, but yeah. if you think about it, it's like sell one shoe and set the rest of your collection up. It makes it look nice. It's mm-hmm. worth it. Um, my boxes get crushed and put under my yep. bed. Yeah. So we, um, yeah, someone came in one day and sold us a few of them for like $3 a piece. And I was yeah. like, yeah, I need those. And I love them now. So it, it makes me want to just get more instead of having my boxes stacked up. Cause it's yeah. easier access anyways. And it looks better. It just, it looks yeah. really good. Dang. You, you just reminded me and I'm going to run out and grab it, but we're not going to the podcast, but we have a sponsor okay, called okay. Northern chill. Well, we won't show this America's water, the best water in the world. I can't believe I forgot to grab. We just got our shipment in Let me like get a some. few days ago. So I'm gonna be right back. Fast forward, fast forward the footage. <laughs> we are back with the sponsor, Northern Chill, America's water, the best water in the world, naturally alkaline, 7.8 pH, has calcium, magnesium, chloride, sodium, potassium, all in the water. If you read the ingredients, only one ingredient. That's natural spring water from Polar, Wisconsin. It's nice. The best water in the world. I tell you, I didn't have this water for almost two months. I didn't have it. I just we just weren't on their shipping list for some reason. They apologized, but we got it now. I've been drinking. I was drinking like the random water, whatever, like gallons you can just find Target, whatever. And then I took one sip of this for the first time back, and I felt like I was revived. That's nice. And there's no. I said that earlier today, so I'm not even lying. They gotta put you on the top of the list, though. Yeah. They they said they switched something over, and we missed it. But but they've been with us for almost two years now. So cool. It's, it's dope. That's love. <sighs> You guys need so to do good. a little water wave northern chill yeah. collab bottle. That's what we want to do. Well, I've been not. trying to talk to them. I want to get our own flavor, but they don't do any flavored waters yet. Yeah. And I know that takes a whole that's like a whole different um 
process line or whatever you want, conveyor belt, whatever, however they yeah, do yeah, their yeah. water. Like they'd have to have a whole separate section because you can't mix flavored water with normal water on the same conveyor belt, something like that. That's what they said. But oh, I'm out of breath. I ran to the front. But back to the back to the interview. What do you think about the, the SB hype right now or the dunk hype? Man, the SB hype is ridiculous. Um, there's just so many shoes that are going for outrageous prices that we – close to gave away a few years ago and nobody mm-hmm. cared about it just really shows like how large of an influence social media and celebrities and now tiktok is mm-hmm. taken off and everybody's wearing what they see on there um i you know there's pros and cons to it definitely it's it, it's a phase i'd say and it happened with the yeezys it's happening mm-hmm. with the dunks it's happening with the ones it seems like the jordan four is up next That'd be nice. But, yeah, the dunks are – it's wild to see people selling these dunks for $1,500, $2,000, and my friends in high school were, like, skating the shit out of them, and we were just trading them around or, like, giving them to each other when we were done with them. Literally. Yeah. Do you so. think – do you think like it's gonna eventually like they're gonna die down like the av- like I know I, I, eventually like the average colorway dunk is probably not gonna be as hyped as it is at this point like years down the line I assume like just you know, only like the the new ones that become like the black and the cobalts and like the the black and white ones and just like the the, the color the ones are just like that yeah but do you think like the Sean Clivers and the, the 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 chunky dunks like do you think those will always be a high ticket shoe or do you think the dunks are going to like die off and those are just gonna, people that have been holding them past a certain point are going to start they're going to start going down yeah i mean i think they'll always be a relatively high shoe maybe not as high as the market is right now we'll see how things pan out but sb's always done an amazing job at having really creative shoes with great storylines great materials and they've been doing it for a really long time and mm-hmm. you know the the general masses are just catching wind of that um, because of people like Travis and yeah. Kylie and um, so yeah I mean SBs are really unique you know the Jordans you see a lot of them they come out and they're very similar or they do a different colorway of a shoe but it's not quite different enough yeah and SB is like distinctive especially if it's a collab with somebody mm-hmm. um, and then back to the normal colorways you know those might fade off but they are always going to be a classic so the classics kind of slowly trend up yeah, and as more people wear them, there's less new pairs, and yep. yeah, I, I and feel they that retro too. again, and we do it all over again. Yeah, you yeah. kind of led into my next question, but what do you think of like the Travis hype, like the Travis merch, the McDonald's, and then obviously he he transformed, he brought the SB kind of where it is today, I'd say, but yeah. just like the overall like Travis Scott is now like basically like a supreme at this point, I'd almost say like his his name is like as a brand. Yeah, like, I mean he's done an incredible job. Um, I. I don't know what to think about it. Mm-hmm. You know, he's reckoning money from every angle, and I respect it. There's some stuff that some people think is cheesy or phony or whatever, the McDonald's collab, but that could be for somebody else. It could be really cool. So mm-hmm. um, I think it's a great role model the way he moves too. You know, he's he's a pretty good dude and mm-hmm. um, came up from almost nothing, and now he's running the show, like you said. So. Mm-hmm. I'm all for it. You know, I'm ready for something new. I'm ready for the next cool person. Me too. We all are. Yeah, shit gets tiring, but um, he's killing it. Mm-hmm. And uh, like I, on that topic, a lot like that's one of our most asked about or t- quick sold items is the Travis merch in our store. And I don't know if it's the same with you or not, but I was curious, like what items, like as soon as they're on the racks, like they're gone quick or people are always asking about them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the Jordan ones, the classic bathing ape tees. We've been go to spot for bait for like seven years now. Um, Supreme box logos if they're mm. priced right. Um, right now, Yeezys. We were talking about that last week. Mm-hmm. I feel like our Yeezys. You know, they weren't sitting, but through the winter, they weren't moving well. Mm-hmm. And then the the sun came out, and everybody wants a fresh pair of Yeezys for the yep. summer. It's a seasonal shoe here. That's how I feel too. The Yeezys, yeah. the Yeezys are definitely our most popular shoe. They I don't know if it, I don't know if statistically it is, but it definitely seems like it is. I'd say it's up there. Yeah. yeah. Another great model that's always done well for us is the Jordan Eleven. Mm-hmm. It's just like a classic favorite for a lot of sneakerheads, especially ones. OGs. Yeah, ones are a no brainer yeah. for sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How do you? I guess the Jordan One hype, like when like 
like the UNCs came out, and then like like they everyone just knows they're just gonna be a big shoe one day, or they're or they they basically already are. I mean like yeah. they're like people you know five hundred dollars local, um you know like whatever like three fifty three eighty on StockX right now. But how do you feel about I guess the Jordan one when it comes out and then it's just immediately like, like you know buy it for retail you know five hundred on the spot like like. Man, I think it's it's pretty crazy. Um, I know I have friends reach out who want to buy sneakers nowadays who want to get something and it's just hard to explain even like hey this is kind of how it is like if you want that shoe you should buy it for 400 before it's 600 Mm -hmm. and it seems ridiculous but there's there's other shoes available you don't have to do that yeah um i remember dating back to like 2013 was when the last round of like royals came out the shadows and the bread ones were coming around uh, around that time and they were selling out and they were reselling for like 300 and i was like i don't want to pay more than 250 yeah for them and now one comes out and you can buy it for 300 you're like i'll take every mm-hmm. single pair i can touch if it's like a university blue or something nice mm-hmm. so it's really wild how popular they have become yeah yeah i mean i and i got my first pair of jordan ones like not too long ago like yeah. i like because i i was a big sneakerhead when i was in high school but i was really big into like yeezys like i was get you know it was way easier to get yeezys like on adidas.com when they drop at least when i when i was in high school i always hit i would yep. always hit a pair of yeezys and then either just hold on to them for a while or just flip them right away but that was just kind of like my sneaker game right there and then i wore i got a jordan one in store luckily so you know a size 13 royal blue came in and i just kept it for myself but it's not the most comfortable shoe at least in my opinion no, it's but not. it's a very popular shoe. Yeah, and I understand why it looks great on the foot, but it's just not the most comfortable. I think I just need to get some new insoles or something. But that'll help. Yeah. yeah, most of the classics, if you think about them, you got like the the Air Force ones, the Air Jordan one, mm-hmm. the Blazer. Not really all day comfort. But, yeah, like you know, that's, that's why I'm big that's into what Yeezys I, though. I grew up and on that. I'm a slides. Nike boy. Yeah, I love my Yeezy slides. Mm-hmm. Um, but I never really caught the big Adidas wave i definitely did like the easy thing for a short bit mm-hmm. gave it a try and just had to to get back to my mm-hmm. roots with the nike and jordan i was really yeah. i was in high school i was really big into the ultra boost i uh, yeah it's just super such com- a comfortable yeah shoe. so comfortable like, yeah. that's probably the most comfortable tennis shoe even i put that above the yeezy just because of how thick the boost was and it was like it I would agree. like curve to your foot so perfect that i'd wear nmds too but not as comfortable as the boost a little more flat yeah but they're way cheaper like boost would retail for like 220 any colorway didn't have to be like a exclusive anything but the nmds were like 110 or something like that yeah but, yeah and then they were all reselling like the nmd was two and the ultra mm-hmm. boost was three yeah but. in any colorway used to resell for the ultra boost nmds back in the so day because they did that bape collab with the ultra boost nmds yep. and then i remember after that it was just like everything is just it's gone, gone. It's gone. Like, no. You can't get a pair unless you go get like a tan pair at like Finish Line or Foot Locker or something like that. Um, While everybody was paying resale for those uh, Ultra Boosts, all the dunks were sitting for below just retail. Sitting. Nobody just wanted them. I know. Yeah. Some what's a so the a lot of some guys some guy came in with a box full of 6.0s and they look dope, but like there's not. A market for them because a lot of them they were all from like 2006 or something but they were like all brand new or like slightly used or whatever yeah do you know like i don't know too much about the 6.0 but is it is there a reason why like that one hasn't kicked off as much as just an sb or you know the no other dunks i think it's just uh nike try to do something different and have kind of like a middle grade dunk in between like the normal dunk and the sb and it just didn't really catch you know people who are rocking sbs it's not an SB, bro. The 6.0 you know? was like the cheap version. Or exactly. Whatever. Okay. Yeah. You know, Makes sense. Yeah. Makes sense. Um, we were on the topic of the Yeezy slides, which a lot of people probably think is ugly. So what is something you would never wear, but is very popular? Something that I would never wear or is very popular. Like it's like, like it's super hyped up. Man, it's super I, I ugly, but I, you would, you would never wear I don't want to answer this because my customers are watching, you know? What's but, something that you, know, you just wouldn't personally want to put on your feet? <laughs> I, I don't wear V2s. Okay. I don't wear v mm-hmm. I will not wear, like, anti-social social club. Mm-hmm. But I sell a lot of those things, and people love them, and that's kind of the beauty in life. You know, they're still fly on other people, but it's either, like, that brand... The people behind it, they don't sit well with me or it's not something that I want to represent 
or it's too flashy. Um, those are to name a few, you know, mm-hmm. and I'm also just like back to like, I stick to my roots, what I like the most. The OG and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of always been Bape head. Like we've always, I've always liked Bape. So I'm always on Bape, a little bit of Supreme. Um, but there's a lot of, a lot of hype shit that I would never wear. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I feel but. that too. Like there's a lot of brands that like, I'm more big into what the shirt looks like rather than like um, feeling crazy for wearing that brand. Yes. Like, yeah, as like, you should be. Yeah. Like, like, I don't know. Like, I like a lot of Supreme stuff, but I don't like wearing something that's just like, like I'm wearing Supreme. Look at me like yeah. that type of stuff. But like, I, yeah. like, I like a few of their things or like the box logos are dope, but it's like at the same time, it's like I could, I could get so much cooler stuff for this for way cheaper of a price or, that's you know, similar I stuff. Too, it just man. looks cooler. Like, yep. Like, it's not really in the brand for me, but I have been falling in love with shoes, though. Like, sh- recently, like, just working in the store has just been making me fall in love with shoes way more than I have in the past, for oh, sure. yeah, man. It's fun. Mm-hmm. It's easy. What do you think of, of like, the Minneapolis sneaker and hype, like, community? Like, do you think, compared to, I guess, other places? Uh, you've been in, in way longer than me, so. Yeah. I mean, I've been to plenty of other places. It's It's always dope to travel. You never really fully understand what the community is like in another place until you're living there and active in it for a long time you mm-hmm. know minnesota is awesome it's really cool how it's a smaller city relatively smaller and it's a tight knit and most people know each other um in the last few years that's it's expanded so much it's crazy mm-hmm. even specifically like in the last year during the pandemic i just feel like everybody's a sneakerhead now mm-hmm. like everybody's out this spring and wants a fresh pair of shoes, whether it's their first pair of J's or their third pair of J's today, you know? Yeah. It's, it's crazy. Um, but Minneapolis is dope. Yeah. We, and now there's like shops opening up every other week, it feels like. So, um, people have more places to go to sell and buy and get better deals and, it it's great mm-hmm. yeah it's tight it's awesome to see it grow i didn't think it would get this big like by now and it's every day it's bigger mm-hmm. and so. i yeah i didn't even realize how big it was until we kind of got our spot and people started realizing like that we were here yeah and it's, yeah. it's weird there's been so many more sneaker shops have opened up this year than like even like the past Since like six months even, yeah. yeah yeah and we just yeah it's like all like a bunch in the malls and like yeah. stuff like that and it's i don't like i mean everyone can do what they can do but it's just like it's just, I guess the more the merrier, but I don't know. Do you think that helps, like helps the community or hurts the community? If there's just, if the more, is it more stores, the better, or should we like, there should be like almost like a limit. Like the city should be like, all right, we got to stop at this amount of sneaker stores in the city. Yeah, no, I mean, there is a limit, but mm-hmm. there's not a limit, yeah. but people will make it and people won't make it. You know, it's about who does the best, you know, who gives the best customer service, mm-hmm. gives the best offers, has the best selection. So no, you know, I, I, there's kids coming in every day and they want to open up a sneaker store and I totally support that. And I think, you know, if that's your dream, that's amazing. You should do that. I'm doing that. I'm living out my dream. Like it's amazing. And you know, every sneaker store that opens up, there's a couple thousand new sneaker heads Mm -hmm. for that store. So, you know, there's really room for everybody to eat out here. Mm -hmm. And like, even when you guys moved in across the street, it hasn't hurt me at all. Yeah. You know, it's, if anything, it's helped Piff. You guys were sharing customers. Yep. You guys are stocking other items. You know, we both have our pros and cons like every mm-hmm. business does. Yeah. That's really. like the yeah. main thing I wanted to make sure like when we moved in is that like we like had a good relationship and it wasn't yeah. like a competition. It was more of like, Hey, like, like if we get this like, really expensive item that we're not really looking to cash out, but you guys deal with that way more. Like we send people that way. If they exactly, come with the nicer bro, stuff, yeah. like, and I know you send people over to us that have maybe too worn a few shoes that you just don't want to deal with or stuff like that. And, yeah. and like, yeah. And even if it's like, even if we don't, if it's just a shopper that comes in our store and they like, Oh, do you have a size that, you know, size this size in the shoe? Like, Oh no, we don't. But you know, go check across the street. They might have it. Like we do that exactly, a lot. Like dude. it just like, there's no, cause if we make that person happy, like, they, they'll come back to either one and it's like it, it, there's almost no reason for them not to at least just go over there and check you know what i mean and see what you 100%. got and we wanted to hit that niche of of the vintage clothing 
like because you obviously do a lot more of the high end yeah there you go you I got the center vintage, check on yeah. yeah you have like the higher end stuff yeah. we can do the vintage stuff like we we have our little hype rack but it's nothing compared to like what you stock in your store you yeah. know what i mean like and we don't need to do that because you have it across the street so it helps us out and it's like like you don't need to try to do the the cheaper stuff you don't have to worry about it because like we can do it so it's like it's we definitely are, a way better dynamic yeah. than it is a competition people always ask that too they come in and they're always like, so, so, so you guys hate Piff or something or, or oh, bro, so you guys, people, are, people want, yeah. you or they're like, so you, so stores. you guys like hate urban yeah. jungle now, huh? Cause you guys are doing a store. We're like, no, we don't. It's like, like, I don't like, everybody if anything, hate, like it helps grow the that. community together. The yeah. more, the, the more the merrier, but, but people yeah. like to paint their own picture and think that, you know, because you're a store owner, you don't, you don't like the other, other stores, stores, but yeah. it's really like, I admire and look up to like studio 23 phenom familia like those are all amazing stores you know you guys are here now i've been going to urban jungle you know two times a month since they opened um when i'm in the mall i'm gonna pop into third degree heat and see what they got in my size it's like that's what i'm into i'm really passionate about this stuff so it's like if i wasn't at my store doing what i'm doing i would be shopping with them anyways you know so um it's funny how people think that way but it's like no those are those are the homies like we have a similar mindset about mm-hmm. life like yeah it's tight it is yeah it is tight and we yeah i've been going to urban jungle like ever since i moved to minneapolis too so yeah. it's like it's just the community it's always been there it always will be and definitely not trying to step on no toes but yeah and i just, love the vintage game too yeah so. and it's like the best thing about like us and an urban jungle or any other vintage store is that cat and the cobras you can't have you're not going to find the same stuff in every store like every rack's going to have different vintage tees on them it's going to have uh different different shoes you could say different shoes a lot of stores will have similar shoes but like you come into our store you you might not have we won't have the same size as you have as they have as they have whatever whatever and then we added that um the, the spot of the minnesota clothing room which is something that we tried or we've been wanting to do it for a long time and we tried um pitching the idea to some stores before to do it and they just weren't they didn't want to do it like to have like a minnesota section and we could help curate it or you know stuff yeah, like that and they fire. just they didn't want to do it but but yeah as long as as long as you're not trying to step on toes too much then there's no reason to even it's worry about it how do you feel about um uh like figurines like you like the cause figurines or like i know you got the dior ball from us and like you do have a lot of that stuff over there but is that something that you're that you like it just as much as shoes, a little bit less, not even close. Or I love it. Yeah. Okay. Um, I love art. That's just something that I got in my blood from my mom from a little, from a very young age. I grew up painting, coloring, drawing, making figures, doing all that, and just staying creative and you know releasing that negative energy. And like art is amazing. That's what we're here for: wearable art, shoes, clothes. Mm -hmm. um figurines prints whatever it is um but the the collectible toys and figures um i like even more i feel like personally than like a print that's a preference thing as an art collector um i just like having something hands-on that i can pick up and hold and be three-dimensional um but yeah i try to buy everyone i touch so Mm -hmm. i'm kind of addicted to them yeah i feel like once i once i get like the house i'm looking for or at least the living room i'm looking for or the bedroom i'm looking for i'll just be like yeah i need something there something there something there and i'm gonna just start finding them and doing it um i'd rather have an art figure that i'm holding to that's you know gaining value mm -hmm. if worst comes to worst and i need money for my family or a car or a hospital bill you're going to go back to that toy or that collector piece and you're going to, it's going to be a lot more than you're earning that your money sitting in the bank too. Yeah. Honestly, that's how I feel about shoes. Even, even if you're wearing them, if you keep, if you keep care, take care of your shoes. Like if you spend $300 on a shoe brand new, you, you undead stock it, whatever. And so if you, if you wear it like enough times to where you've, you've, you've worn it and you felt good about it, if you keep it in good shape, you you, you sell it for two fifty back to somebody, you, you know, you, you spent $50 on it on a, nice shoe for however many months you had exactly, it that's yeah. what i think a lot of people don't realize at least maybe like parents for kids like like yeah. the kid like you spent 300 dollars on a pair of shoes yeah. it's like yeah because it's worth that and then you you wear it a few times unless you beat it up like like you can always get your money back for it like that's what i think parents don't realize or at least people that aren't in the shoe game but it's the same thing with like designer bags or baseball cards or all that type of stuff but 
yeah, you're exactly right. You just got to explain it to them. That's always a good way to put it. People are spending, you know, a hundred bucks on a pair of shoes and they're wearing them to the ground and then they're donating them for zero dollars or giving mm-hmm. them away for free. Not that we shouldn't donate things as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like you said, you're, you're getting more out of your shoes this way. You're wearing stuff that you're passionate about and it teaches kids at a young age to like keep their things nice mm-hmm. and respect the value of the dollar too. Um, one thing I've noticed when I look up a legit check for a shoe, Piff is like the first website that always comes up. And I don't know if that's because of my location on Google or whatever, but it seems like you guys are killing it with the legit checks online. Like, like to show, you know, a real picture of it, explain what you should be looking for. Like, was that like your idea to just make that like a blog on your page where people could hear about Piff that way? Or like, how did that come to be? Yeah. You know, obviously it's great to have features like that on your website for SEO. So people can find your website, um, easily, like it's popping up for you. So that's Mm -hmm. perfect. But it's, as we know, crucial and super important in the shoe game like everybody's getting taken out by fakes every once in a while it happens and we want to make sure that our customers are getting 100 percent authentic items at all times even if it's not from us Mm -hmm. we're going to do what we can to help make sure that their stuff is real if they're asking for our help so we love to have you know our resources available as possible i wish we had more like legit checks and stuff on the website it's tough to keep up with that stuff but um, you know, we're always offering that in the store too. We're doing that pretty regularly for people. So, I mean, it's, it's a good feeling to be mm-hmm. known as the spot to make sure your stuff is legit, mm-hmm. you know, since that's really important. So definitely makes your customers more comfortable. I'm sure shopping in store. Definitely. Yeah, Cause like yeah. one, one time, um, a guy brought in a pair of shoes. It was like some, some like union fours and I just, I check checked them or whatever, just to, just to be sure. And I was like, you care if I check, check on whatever, just to say, and he's like, oh, no, I'm glad you do. That makes me happier. That that makes me more confident to shop here that you guys take the initiative to do that. Oh, yeah. So I'm, and then there's like that other side of the spectrum. It's like, you don't think my shoes are real or whatever. Yeah. But, but no, you that love. That person has fake shoes if yeah. they're yelling at you saying that. Yeah, most likely. Let's keep it real. <laughs> most likely. What's um What's the next step for Piff? Like, like you, got, you got the website, you got the store, you got the name for yourself. You yeah. probably want, like, you, one of the, the OG stores in Minneapolis like what's like your next goal that you want to accomplish as Piff yeah man I just kind of take things as they come to me and uh grab opportunities that come up but uh obviously always looking to grow the business I think where we're at right now we're in an amazing place everybody's been showing a lot of support since coming back out and even throughout the quarantine we stayed really busy which was humbling like it was really a blessing um, but one thing that I'd really like to start focusing our energy on is making more clothing mm-hmm. yeah, for our Piff brand. So I think, yeah, I think, I think, that, I think you guys like, would sell a lot of it, especially yeah. those, those fluffy hoodies that yeah. you guys had. I know you said that like, well, obviously they were running out and they ran a little bit smaller than you hoped, but I want, I, I was definitely trying to get one of them. I was trying yeah. to do some in-store credit for it on one of my shoes. Cause that was, shit was fire. Good and looks. if you make them like high quality, like that's your type of customers you have. So like yeah. you can afford to make it like really nice shirt high quality and charge a premium for your own stuff because you know you're selling premium goods in your store you might as well become a premium good exactly you know what i'm saying yeah we always get asked you know for more piff clothes and it's coming Mm -hmm. um but it's it's about having the right stuff we're not trying to just put out mediocre things just to make money off you guys it's like we're very particular about putting our brand on items and we want it to be something that we want to wear all the time and mm-hmm. like we like and fuck with before we just like sell it mm-hmm. so, so it's it's coming and uh i think that'll be the next bigger move for the brand fire yeah i only got one more question before we end the podcast it might be the most important one yet all right hit me has yeezy jumped over jump man never never will no there you go. You heard it here first. Never. He hasn't. Yeezy hey, hasn't. You know what else, though? Neither has LeBron. Ooh. Do you think after LeBron retires, no. his shoes no. will get better? I don't like the so his shoe, the look of his shoes. That's just me, maybe, though. But yeah. I don't. They're more. Ba- guess, they're too much of a basketball shoe. I mean, I guess everybody knows Jordan's shoes are better than LeBron's shoes, but I'm just saying as an athlete. Oh, you know, I'm LeBron taking it has. There. A, you I'm take, taking it okay. there. Okay. So you're still. You're, need to, you're Jordan over LeBron for a goat. Yeah. All day. 
I guess I don't know how old you are. Do you, how old are you? I'm 30. I'm about to be 31. Okay, so. about to be 31. So and that's that comes back to like the whole. So ultra Jordan boost. was playing when yeah. you like when you were younger, right? You were my watching Jordan play. F- my first uh, NBA game I went to was to see MJ. Fire. Right, so I w- lived in Chicago at the time. I moved dope. here when I was like seven. So. Oh, dope. Yeah. I didn't even know that. Yeah, so that's the whole. It's in my blood. The, the, the whole Jordan and Nike shit just kind of. Grew up around it. Always wanted to have Jays since I was a little kid, especially mm-hmm. being by Chicago. So, yeah. dope, dope. Well, thank you guys for watching or listening to this podcast. We have Bill OG Rob from Piff Minneapolis in the building. Make sure you stop by his store. What is the exact address of your store now? One five zero six. One five zero six. OG spot where we opened Como in twenty fourteen. That's the first place I, I've been. I was there when I like three years ago or whatever, and that yeah, was the store yeah. I went to. But I never came to it when he was here because I didn't really live around here. Okay, but. Yeah. I wish I would have just to well, kind of see. I seen a video together. of it yeah. one time, but but yeah, one five zero six, one five two one, right across the street from each other, next to Blue Door, Adams, all that, Com- or Como Ave, right on um, Van Cleef Park, right by it. Come by, come shop, go spend some money with him. Come spend some money with us. Yes, You're sir. gonna be happy. You're gonna be happy with what you get. Go follow Waterwave TV on Instagram. Go follow Piff Minneapolis on Instagram. Make sure you subscribe, like, leave us a five star rating if you're on Apple Music or Spotify. And yeah, thanks for coming in. Always, bro. Appreciate, Appreciate you. you. Yes, sir.